everybody who's here today, all the family and friends who come together on this gorgeous day in this very lovely Brigmore House to celebrate Ellie and Mike's love and commitment to each other in marriage. Many of you have come from far away because of your connections to the bride and groom and their families. And as Mike and Ellie join in marriage, they bring us all closer together. There are many special people who are unable to be with us here today for one reason or another, so we'd like to take a moment to call them forward in our hearts. We'd especially like to remember Mike's grandma and papa, Mr. and Mrs. Oswald, and Graham and Gramps, Mr. and Mrs. Pig, who were unable to make the trip from Mississippi, as well as Ellie's grandparents, who passed away but would be so happy to see her here today. Mike and Ellie wanted a way to express their love and devotion to each other in forms that go beyond the words of their vows. A special and unique way to mark this joyful occasion and celebrate their creativity. So they've created gifts for each other, and now they'd like to present their gifts. Ellie. Thank you. 
Basically, we represent the families and friends and communities and traditions that have brought Ellie and Mike to this point in their lives. Please affirm your support for this marriage by responding, yes, I do, to the following question. As part of the community that surrounds Mike and Ellie, do you offer your love and support to strengthen their marriage and bless this family created by their union? Yes, yes I do. Mike and Ellie's parents would now like to share some of their thoughts and blessings for this occasion. And we're going to start with Ellie's mom, Miriam Morris. When, when Mike and Ellie asked, asked to speak and come up with words of wisdom, Mike went completely blank. I haven't actually thought of any words of wisdom, but I came up with the idea of, of reading from the prophet, which was um, very popular in the 60s, to the point of being really cliche and probably. But then Ellie and I discovered, or rediscovered the prophet when she was a teenager. So there's a book of uh, words of semi wisdom. And uh, then I think she shared it with a lot of her college friends. So um, I'll, I'll read some words from, from the part about marriage. Not going into any explanations. You'll have to read the book if you, if you want to understand. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, uh, the, the beginning of the, of the page starts with, with speaking about togetherness and togetherness forever. And then it goes to, to say, but let there be spaces in your togetherness. And let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Sing and dance together and be joyous, and let each one of you be alone. Even as the strings of the lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music, Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping. For only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together. For the pillars of the temple stand apart. And the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow. And now, that was lovely, Miriam. Thanks. Mom, or we not would like to share some thoughts. Before Michael was born, 
what Ellie's was just done in the last five months. So during that time, I had thoughts while I was working on hers that I had not thought of while I had worked on his over the last 30 years. Um, I was struck by the number of ancestors it took both to make both Michael and Ellie. <laughs> 